way to start off. Yeah, sure. So um, I'm Professor Dave Maslach. I'm actually an associate professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship at uh, actually at Florida State University. I normally don't disclose that because I don't, um, you know, with intellectual property stuff and, and it makes it a little unusual. But um, I am creating something new, I think, and I want to talk about that today in terms of what this means for everybody and hopefully I can get some input from you. So the whole, the, the, the channel or the uh, presentation I'm going to give is about reciprocity and it's thinking about um, from the sciences to the humanities of the artificial and we'll get into, you know, what do we mean by that in terms of thinking about you know the sciences of the artificial so um i'm just going to go through this in terms of who i am and where i'm going you know i studied a lot of i did a lot of big data stuff my background is actually in chemical engineering and i did management science in my uh, for my master's program and um, both at the university of waterloo and then i did my phd at the ivy school of business at the university of, of western ontario so i'm canadian um and i did my phd in what it was called general management but it's strategy in general so that's how you look at how people make decisions within firms and how firms actually operate so what i study um specifically is learning from failure um, and innovation. So I study different things related to that in terms of decision making, for example, all sorts of things like that. Um, and when I it was when I finished my graduate school, um, I so I finished my PhD and, and I became an assistant professor. I had um, you know I was working with this data that had it was all text data and people would input stuff. So I study. Um, the medical device industry. So I spent that uh, doing that for a long time and looking at adverse events in, in the medical device industry. And people input a bunch of text data um, and detailing their sort of experiences about what is going on with an adverse event that happens. But when people put it in, so it's like physicians, nurses, and things like that, um, they are doing it very quickly. Um, and they're doing it in such a such a way that's hard to actually read it. If you were to to actually look at it, um, you needed human eyes to read it and make sense of what's going on in terms of what they're doing. So it's hard to do it sort of programmably. Um, so then I thought, um, you know, this is a real problem for me, and it's a real problem for a lot of people. Um, and I was sort of puzzling about this for a long time. How do you deal with this text data? And, um, you know, I was puzzling with how can I actually advance science more than what I actually do at this moment in terms of being, you know, assistant professors or studying this kind of stuff. And how can I actually increase my impact in general? Um, and I started puzzling about this kind of stuff. And, and you know, I, I ran into sort of thinking about, you know, how do we actually do science in the social sciences in general um, and it's kind of broadly in the natural sciences as well we tend to measure things right so what we end up doing is kind of like stamp collecting in a lot of different ways right so we measure um traces of, of patterns that happen so organize it you know for me in terms of measuring organizational phenomenon um you know we look at things like archival data and uh, we know that archival data, so this is uh, the stuff that you, maybe a government has um, 20 years of, of data that they recorded and they just put make it publicly available. This is what most strategy research is, actually doing this kind of archival data stuff. Um, but we know that it, it really lacks causation with a lot of, you know, in terms of what you can do with um, archival data because it's it's post hoc it's after the fact somebody's actually done this thing we're just kind of looking at it for patterns um, there is a a large literature in my field on, in strategy and innovation and stuff like that um, that that does um, simulations and a few people are kind of getting into experimental work but it's not really all that common it's hard to do experiments on organizations right so those those kind of studies they tend to simulation studies they tend to lack a lot of validity and um, they're interesting and they're really cool and they have great insights but at the same time they lack some validity in this world um, and then we've got like field experiments where people are kind of 
venturing a little bit into field experiments, but they're generally extremely expensive. There's a great paper out by um, Nicholas Bloom and colleagues that, that I actually assigned. So I teach research methods right now at, uh, in, in, in the program, in, in, in the management program. Um, and there is this great paper, it's, uh, I think it's QJE or something like that, that, that looks at does management matter? And uh, what they did is did a field experiment in like 30 different firms in India, and they spent like $1.5 million to uh, do this, this field experiment where they gave consulting services to some of the firms and um, a little less consulting services to the other firms. They, they found really cool evidence to show that there is a performance and impact of uh, management training. But I mean, nobody in their right mind, other than somebody that's at Stanford and has access to large amounts of capital um, that, 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 that is never gonna be able to do this, right? So field experiments, for the most part, and organizations are kind of out of the question um, for most of us. They're generally pretty expensive. Um, and a lot of the, the, the sort of stuff that we do, um, that we generate, the knowledge that we generate at this moment, um, we get a lot of complaints as sort of management and you know these kind of folks that, that we're doing or who we are, we get a lot of complaints and we, we lack a lot of practical impact in terms of the science that we're generating. And it's true, we're, we're actually just looking at what other people have done and we're not sort of having a lot of practical impact. The translation is not there. Um, so, you know, I, I began to sort of puzzle about this in terms of, you know, how can we sort of change this? What is something that is going on in the, in, in, in the world um, where we can change this and sort of change the parameters such that we can actually change, um, you know, the way that organizations actually work or have access to the ability to, to do more valid science, right? So what if we had access to a platform that can actually change these organizational parameters to make it pretty inexpensive for people to do these kind of, um, you know, more valid things like a field experiment, for example, and have access to it, um, but at the same time, uh, 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 you know, that it's not going to break the bank um, in any sort of way. Uh, and so, this brought me into the, the realm of what is called the science of the artificial. So Herbert Simon, if you don't know, he actually won the Nobel Prize uh, and, uh, in, in, in economics. He's a really smart guy, but he's, he's not just kind of like an economist kind of person. He's enormous impact across the sciences, the social sciences, um, from like computing to you know philosophy and all this kind of stuff. He's a really interesting guy. Um, and he had this idea of the sciences of the artificial, um, where instead of being focused on sort of uh, creating artifacts, right? So most of the research we, we create, research findings that we create are kind of like artifacts, like stamp collecting. But what if um, we're more concerned with design? And there's a lot of fields that are actually really concerned with design, right? So engineering, medicine, um, you know, roughly business, but but I don't think so much. But um, you know, architecture and painting are concerned not with the uh, necessary, but with the contingent, not with how things are, but with how they might be. In short, with design. So thinking about how can we create a new world um, in terms of you know something that is that is interesting that we can sort of really impact, um, have impactful research and, and sort of have an impactful. Um, you know, create something that's new and different. So um, I thought, you know, I'm I'm an engineer. I had like a software background, and in, in, in you know, I'm I understand engineering and, and all this kind of stuff and putting it together. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if I actually created something that um, you know with some software where people can ac actually get access to um, you know the the to get access to be able to do some of the, the science that we would really love to do in the in organizations. Um, and on my way home uh, many years ago now it, it's, I think it was about uh, five years ago I was coming home from Disney. I live in Tallahassee and I was coming home from Disney Orlando is about four hours away with my kids and I was thinking, you know, what if I had a platform? What if we had a platform that ha allowed us to do better writing? So I struggle with writing. You know, as an engineer, um, I really struggle with writing. That's just not my my strength. Um, I I write a lot. That's our job. But what if we were able to create some platform where um, we can get help on writing and get feedback on what we do, so we can actually do better research. 
Um, and and I you know I pondered this for a long time after that 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 trip from Disney, and then you know I tried to put a team together here in in Tallahassee in terms of being able to do this. It didn't quite work out, so I actually kind of got frustrated after about a year, and um, I got some contract manufacturers or contract developers out of uh, Ukraine, and now I have some some group out of out of India or a group of, of developers in India who are amazing. And um, we're developing a, a new software or no, new platform. It's called uh, reciprocity.com. And it's really, what I like to view it as is a writing feedback um, platform. So you can actually get, you could do better with your research. You can actually um, become a better researcher. So thinking about all the different tools that we can sort of build into this thing so we can excel in what we're doing and we can sort of take some of the burden on on the way that we sort of do it right now um, and, and create some sort of platform that does that, right? So the way I imagine it, it is, and, and this is how it's, it's built. You can check it out if you want. Um, it's a sharing economy, two-sided market, right? So we know about these sort of two-sided markets where we've got buyers and sellers that come on to the marketplace um, and it, it's to be able to facilitate the, the people that want to get uh, um, access to to people that want to provide feedback on on their work, but also people that that have work that they need to to get feedback on and sort of corrections and improvements on those particular things, right? So it's a digital a platform, it's a digital system that facilitates facilitates communications, interactions, and innovations to support economic transactions and social activities. Um, and the reason why I'm doing that that's kind of the front end is to solve this sort of bigger problem of like how can we actually do better um, science how can we become better researchers but on the back end this is what i'd love to open up is to have the ability that we can do a b experiments or a b testing and open that up to um to social scientists or sciences sciences around the world which are essentially so a b testing if you don't know it evolved out of um, Silicon Valley um, about 10 years ago now, and it's used widely on all software um, where they present um, two screens to you, where one, or, or they present different screens to different people when you're using software. So some group of people get one screen and another group gets another screen, and you never know who gets what you know even when you go back uh, and you try to go to that web page again you'll get presented with the old the version that you saw in the first place so it's it's very valid in terms of the science that that, that is being generated um which are essentially randomized controlled trials so we can get access to this we create this sort of platform that we can get um you know causal data or causal insight um as best as we can i know causal is really hard to get at but we can get um, really good um, causal understanding, but as well as we can, you know, get a lot of performance metrics that are really hard to get, um, that that are that are very difficult. So in strategy, we we focus on things like, um, you know, firm performance, which is like, you know, ROA, return on assets, um, you know, uh, return on employees, and things like that. But we don't get a lot of operational stuff because that's impossible to get that information in a real organization but with this we can get all sorts of really cool performance metrics um you know like how how much somebody is actually um, writing for example um you know how to the, the degree of of um you know how much they've improved over time we can get sort of subjective understandings of what they are um, all these kind of things and as long as it's all completely anonymous and it's vetted through irb and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, you could do some really cool things here in terms of getting causal understanding of what things, how things are actually working. And if we can sort of get people, um, sort of like-minded researchers to participate on this thing, then, um, you know, I think a lot of people would be interested in to, to help out because I see the value of what we're trying to do. Um, and so how does this actually work, right? So you've got on the platform itself, you've got writers and, and, and editors, um, they're, they're the same person, right? So you can actually be an editor or, or a writer, um, whatever you wanna do. The writers will upload documents um, and it requires credits to actually upload these documents. Um, and you, the way that you actually get credits to, 
to, uh, uh, to get your work edited um, or get feedback on your work is you have to, you know, there's two ways of doing that. One of them is reciprocity based editing. Um, and, and you get that for credits, but the, the credits, as long as you're helping out other people um, before you actually do anything in return or you get feedback in return, you have to help out other people. So 100% of that is free. So I built it so it's, it's free as long as you're sort of helping out other people in advance um, and there's no system fees at all. But you can also do a, a payment, right? So you, you log on to it and then you could pay for credits, which are insanely cheap compared to you know what it costs to actually get a, you know, an, an editor or a copy editor that, that that was a part of the reason why I, I thought about this problem is because i went into my um you know my department uh, chair at the time and i said can i get to my copy can i get my paper copy edited so being at a state institution we don't have the resources as a lot of places and and i got rejected on that so i said well you know that's not fair if there's institutions out there that have access to these resources and there's there's all these institutions around the world that don't have access to this so can we make can we level the playing field and make it a little bit more um you know just just make it more fair for people to get access to this kind of stuff so the the actual editing that you can get done um, is very inexpensive uh, if, you know it's a, it's a couple of cents per per word um and 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 when you add it all up, it's, it's really, really very inexpensive. Um, and then the editors themselves, once they've make, got a, um, once they've edited enough documents and they've done a good enough job, they sort of met, um, you know, quality standards and their ratings are high enough, right? So it's based on a rating system, just like all the other um, sharing economy platforms that are out there that you're well, well aware of, right? So like the Airbnbs and Ubers and stuff like that. Um, there's a there's a rating system and that rating system you rate the other people and if you fall below that rating system you can't um, take any money out of the system so it, it it creates incentives for you to do a really good job to to participate on this particular thing and at that point you know at this moment it takes 20 percent of the system fees if anybody um, takes money out of the system but um you know, I haven't got there yet, so we're in a we're we're st I'm still building this, um, and and on top of that sort of platform where we've got this marketplace, right? So I'm building in um, all sorts of different tools or add-ins that you might think about, and I'm trying to build these in to to help us out, right? So right now I've got a plagiarism detector that's in there. It's a machine learning based um, plagiarism detector. Um, you know, a sentiment analysis. This is coming out. I hope this week. Uh, that's really cool if you load something in there the sentiment analysis is super cheap um, and then it will check the tone of your paragraphs that you have and um, you know give you smiley faces or frowny faces depending on the tone is like negative or positive um, and then you know i've got like a rule-based grammar checker and spell checker that's actually all free um, and, and how am i doing this is actually there's a lot of packages that are already available out there and uh, these packages can be put into a system like this, but you have to build it first and create an audience or create a, a you know, number of users to actually use this thing. So um, what I'm planning on doing in terms of you know, where this is gonna go is to gamify it a lot more and turn it into where we create like dashboards where you look, look at you know, um, how your writing is improving, you know, just something like very similar to what you'd see on like a Fitbit kind of thing, um, where you can sort of see what you're doing, your progress that you're making and different charts and, you know, rankings and things like that to improve our ability. Because right now, one of the fundamental problems that we have with writing and doing good research is the fact that we don't have a lot of information about that right nobody's trying we we don't know whether we're doing good research or not um until we actually sort of produce this stuff and and we get rejected which we all get rejected on this stuff um you know and i want to build in uh, and more machine learning you know natural language processing um you know and more editing options and making it more social and then as well as is really working on the sort of experimental back back end to open it up where it's kind of like a um, Amazon MTurk. So actually that's, that was one an impetus was thinking about Amazon MTurk. Um, and the problem is, is that 
these experiments that you're doing in Amazon mTurks that a lot of people do, they're, they're kind of fake experiments. They're scenarios. People are not actually doing real things on there. Um, and so it's not really productive work. And so do we know that that's actually how they behave? I mean, the validity is not quite there. It's better, but it's not quite at what you think it would be um, because people are sort of doing these make-believe things. But if we can create a real scenario, a real thing, real stuff that people are doing, um, we can get some really cool understanding about this um, in terms of what people actually do, and we have a much more valid understanding of organizations. So, you know, ta -da, I built this thing, I put it out in the world, um, I think it was about three years ago now when I built this thing, and man, I was just like way off the mark in terms of understanding how this stuff actually works. Um, in terms of, you know, it's funny because when you teach entrepreneurship, it's not quite the same thing as like actually, you know, going through it, um, but you know, you, you're, you're, you just kind of forget about this kind of stuff. So um, nobody uses this thing and I got to figure out how to actually get the people to actually use this thing and, and, and to participate on this thing, right? So right now um, it's growing at, at, a, as, at an okay pace. I think like, you know, in terms of where it's gonna go uh, in, the, in the next year or so, I'm probably, you know, gonna be at least double the number of users than I have right now, probably. Um, we know that this is this is a little tricky, but right now I've got about uh, 2,200 users that are on it in terms of figuring this out, uh, or people actually use going on it and actually doing a few things here and there. Now, this is not like active users because the way that these platforms work, it's like, you know, Airbnb and Uber and stuff, people log in, but they're, they don't have to be active all the time. Right? It's not like this forum that we're on right now or the Discord that we're doing right now. You don't have to be active all the time. Um, or it is a lot, like I guess. If, once you put information on it, then people can get access to it in, intermittently. And um, so that's kind of the interesting thing here. So there's two empirical puzzles um, that I've had to deal with so far, and I'm still struggling with the, the second one. The first one is, is how do you actually get the word out of this? Um, and so I started doing, I actually talked to a friend of mine that was in kind of software industry. And I asked him, you know, what, what do we do? Because nobody is, you create these websites that are the, the way it works. Um, and, and, you know, you're doing the, the academic uh, economics discord is kind of, kind of like this. It's, it's, a, it's an island. Nobody knows about it. And it's completely irrelevant until people start seeing it and understanding it. And then once you start doing that, once people start understanding what's going on and what you're doing, that people start searching it. And then the search engines start ranking it. So it doesn't even show up in search engines and, unless you specifically search the term reciprocity. But if you search for like proofreading platform, it's not going to show up. Um, and so that's the problem that, that I've been figuring out is how do you get the word out about this thing? Um, because the, 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 there's penalties, there's natural penalties in this world with, with startups, which it should be, right? Because there's lots of, um, you know, Google has to fight this problem of all these scammy people that are out there and scam, scam artists that are out there. And so they have to penalize things that, that don't look valid, right? So, but how do you get the word out and get, you know, getting it on the search engines and stuff like that? Um, you, I figured out that I had to start doing these YouTube videos. And that's what my friend said is just start doing explainer YouTube videos. I started doing these things and I started doing them a lot, um, on a regular basis. And, um, you know, I, I actually have almost a million views. So probably within a month or two, um, I'll be at a million views. I have three quarters of a million views of helping predominantly, um, it's like PhD students and, and new graduate students that are thinking of becoming a PhD or a researcher. Um, but in, in general, it's, it's, it's kind of wide ranging in terms of getting people to, to be okay with themselves. So, and this is a real problem, I think, um, in, in, in sort of the, when I, I initially believed that we needed a platform, like the software, right? Um, and the software would sort of solve all of our problems and all that kind of stuff. But it's really not that. It's not the science of the artificial, I don't think, that's the real problem. It's actually the humanities of the artificial. It is really um, connecting and building relationships with other people. Um, and what I discovered after I started doing this is, you know, 
because I'm interacting with like PhD students and graduate students on this thing is I started tracking analytics um, and it was really targeting kind of sciencey folks like 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 us. Um, and I really began to see the things that resonated were that that a lot of us um, are really struggling scientists, scientists and researchers and graduate students are really, really, really struggling with a self-confidence um, crisis and dealing with things like, you know, depression and, and um, you know, dealing with the real things that we deal with on a regular basis. And what I, what I saw um, is, is I, I think what's going on is that we have this sort of view of the way that science works is that, that we're always targeting you know, the, the upper echelons of scientists. And we always think that the, we should be like these upper echelons of the scientists. But in reality, almost all of us are at the average, right? So we have this sort of perception we should be over here, but really most of us are over here and we're struggling with that all the time. Um, so what I'm trying to do, especially on the YouTube channel and in all the different channels, you know, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm doing TikTok videos now, is to be as real and authentic um, as I can. So I can build connections with you, but at the same time to realize that you are totally, totally normal with this, right? So I look back, um, a lot of it is, is me looking back at my own life and where I went through with graduate school and now as being a, a, you know, a professor, it is looking back and realizing, man, it was really, really tough. And if I could tell somebody that it's okay, that you're going to be okay, um, and you are you are dealing with this um, as best as you can at this moment to get through it, then um, you really can um, you could get through, and you can get through the process. And having that hope that you can get through to the other side, I think, is so fundamental to this. So that's where it's kind of evolved. Is I'm almost, um, you know, I'm almost like an advisor like this. So the way I look at it is in the middle of the night, we, we, most of us will get this kind of like anxieties, right? And, and we have all these questions that we don't want to talk to, to other people, other graduate students, because they're going to make fun of us, right? We were just talking about before we started re recording this, we, we had the econ job market rumors, um, you know, website platform that's out there. And it is really rough. So if you were to even comment on any of this kind of stuff, people are just going to just chew you up. So if I can create this, this climate where, where people feel good about themselves and they feel like it's totally normal what they're going through, um, I think I've done a pretty good job in terms of you know, helping science out. If I can get them to feel okay with being a, a researcher or a scientist or a PhD, that's, that's gonna do a lot more to science than uh, anything that I can possibly do at this moment. And you know, as, uh, it, it's, it's, as I struggle with these kind of things, if I'm open about it and I'm authentic about it, then, then you will get so much more from it. So the issue that we have is not really, you know, do we need another technology? Um, it's really, do we, can we build a more human, um, uh, a human culture, a human uh, community within the sciences? And, and if you talk to anybody, any real scientist, any real researcher, they're going to tell you that, that that is something they struggle with deeply all the way through. And in fact, I study kind of the science of science, um, and, you know, kind of peruse it and that kind of stuff. And, and that comes through from years and years and years ago, science is struggling with dealing with, um, you know, how do I get this novel, innovative idea out without people discounting me or me feeling about myself and stuff. So this is a real fundamental theme in um, science and research. So that's the first puzzle is, you know, how do I actually get the word out and how do I connect with people? And, and for me, it's telling our story and, and being more authentic with who I am so that you guys know that it is okay to feel how you are at this moment. So I'm trying to be as like honest as, as I can. And I know it's weird and, and awkward, but you know, I try to be. Um, and then the second thing, and this one is the one that you guys might be able to help me out because you're a heck of a lot more smarter than I am. You're a bunch of economists. Um, I'm a wannabe economist, but um, I'm not there in terms of who you are. 
But, um, you know, how do I get people to actually start using this thing and get people to submit documents and, 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 and actually start becoming sort of a fundamental tool to what they're doing? So I've got the way it's actually set up at this moment is that there's a lot of people that are actually wanting to contribute and they're wanting to be editors on it. Um, so the number of free contributing editors is, is pretty large, but um, the, the number of people that are actually uploading documents is really tiny. So it's like, I'm talking, um, you know, a couple of week at this moment of people actually wanting to upload anything on it. So that's the struggle that I have. And it's kind of a weird thing because in, in economics, um, in, in, in if you study like software development and open source software development, this has kind of been a puzzle that's been going on a long time is that, um, you know, why would anybody contribute freely and want to actually do this? We actually have a scenario here where I've got a lot more people that are, I think, wanting to, to work for free, um, at least temporarily. And, um, there's a lot less people that are wanting to actually get the work done for free or inexpensively, right? So there's, it's very inexpensive in terms of using this thing um, in terms of, you know, if you've got a document. So there's a lot of puzzles in terms of why this is. Is it, is it a, you know, transparency issue? Is it a trust issue? Is it, um, you know, what is really going on? Is it because is it because it's it's you know not enough people are know about it? Which I don't know because I've got like almost a million views now on YouTube. Um, you know what is going on? Is this the thing that I've designed something that nobody would else use except for myself? I don't think that's the case. So there's lots of sort of empirical puzzles there to think about. You know why is it that we have more people that are willing to give? than it is that people are willing to sort of receive or, or take that particular thing. Um, so it's kind of an interesting thing. So, you know, where I, I think I wanna end this is, you know, first of all, obviously I'm looking for people that wanna sort of do research contributions on this and, and, and think about what kind of experiments they wanna do. And, and obviously it's gotta be vetted through IRB and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, if you've got something that you're interested in, that you can, you think this would be useful to test that that would be cool. Um, you know, I'm going to be upfront. You probably have to do things that are not quite at the stage where, where people are, you know, uploading documents, for example, I can get people to contribute, but it can't get them to upload documents. Um, and then the other thing is to, you know, what is it that you do in research at this moment that is a real puzzle or a real difficulty for you that I can build into this so we can sort of change it, right? So this is, this is me giving back um, and figuring out how do I actually make a bigger impact? And so what can we do to make our jobs easier? What, how can we sort of see this platform of, of doing something that is that's gonna be useful for, for all of us? Um, and, and because it's software, it's relatively um, okay to do. And, you know, at this time, it's, it's the way that, that intellectual property works. Um, and that's why I, I wanted to meet on, on a Sunday. It's kind of a weird thing. This is a side project. Um, and so it is 100% owned and operated by myself um, in, in my wife, obviously. But, you know, this is something that, that, that is, is sort of a tricky issue to sort of navigate. Um, but that's why we're doing it, uh, or that's why I have a lot of control over it at this moment in terms of where we want to take this and what you want to do. Um, I'm willing to sort of, you know, pay to that to develop this kind of stuff. But then I need some ideas at this moment in terms of what you would love to do. So that's it for the the um, presentation. I know it's a little different than kind of a research presentation, but um, you know, hopefully it's gonna help you and uh, get some insight in terms of what I'm doing with the reciprocity project. So if there's any questions, I can't see them at this moment. Um, I'm gonna. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, I guess like, you know, one of the, the, the you know, pr primary uh, questions uh here is with reference to uh you know just to, like i mean this is more i mean this is going to get you know usually the meme like more of a comment than a question 
Um, but really, uh, you know, if this could just go and provide some insight on the project in general, right? The way that I found out about I about the project was more through your YouTube videos as an internet personality rather as someone that is actually developing a platform, right? I only found out about the platform, yeah. you know. It took a while, like after, maybe like, you know, after I managed to add you on LinkedIn or whatever, right? In order for me to go and figure out like, oh, hey, you're, you know, this isn't just like, you know, a, a motivational thing. It's, uh, you know, it's more of something over there. So would you say that it could be that there's a disconnection between necessarily like the, the promotional element and, you know, the user sign up, or is it like, you know, a different question altogether? So, no, I don't think so. Um, I think so here again, it, the, the issue is if you go directly in terms of connecting, you know, if I, if I just sort of sell this directly um, and say what this thing is, it's never going to get any um, traction in any sort of way because what's happening is that there's, um, you know, that you have to sort of think about the supply and demand for this kind of stuff, right? So that's why I sort of mentioned that I didn't bring it up is that there is um, other things that are out, you know, other tools that are, are doing kind of comparable things um, and sort of entering the marketplace is a little tricky, but also is nobody in the right mind is going to listen to somebody talk about like, you know, proofreading or editing or whatever, right? It's really boring and it's not connecting with people. And so getting that connection, that's what you see. So for example, um, uh, you know, some of these so social influence, so influencers are doing this is, you know, Gary V for uh, Gary Vanderchuk, for example. Um, you know, what's the the guy from New York that uh, did, um, and he did the videos in New York on YouTube, and then he ended up creating this, this sort of side thing that he was doing. Um, I forget that guy's name. But anyways, it's about, the tricky thing is, you know, if you go sort of, into it um, in the sense that that you're doing kind of real direct marketing, I guess, it, it it's not building a connection with anybody. And um, that connection is, is the sort of vital thing, I think, to get people to sort of build trust in anything, right? So this is the reason why you reached out to me is because of, um, you know, touching on some of those things and, and how do you, how do you get to the point where people are using this particular thing um, is, is the trouble. So I spent the first full year actually doing what you're saying is like doing kind of the, the, the heavy handed, um, you know, this is how this thing works or this is the, you know, the setup of it and all that kind of stuff. But there was no traction. It was not getting anything. And it wasn't until, you know, I started being more, um, real about it and talking about why I'm actually doing this, you know, talking about the why, uh, which is kind of, you know, it's foo-foo stuff, but I think it's the, the foo-foo foo -foo stuff is very important to doing these things, to, to building, um, you know, long-term connections with people. And that makes it, do you know what I'm saying with this? Yeah. Okay, good. Sure. Yeah, so if you think about how these search, the sharing economy editing or sharing economy um, platforms work is, um, you know, you think about like, yeah, or, or platforms in general, software platforms, you know, like your Airbnbs, your Ubers, your Etsy's, um, I, I don't know what else is there. There's the, you know, all of those ones, Jobber. Um, what they're targeting, and this is why they were so cool, is that, the way that the industry worked before is we have these sort of very narrow um, you know, channels of how we understand these things. 
but there is huge numbers of people that are are not academics or you know that that your moms or your dads or whatever that want to participate in science or want to help out with these different things like kind of like a, it's called citizen science and then want to help out um, but they don't know how or there is no real place that they can actually do anything like this and and the trouble is is like we as researchers, we want to write, we want to develop things, but then there is these other groups, you know, like people in the um, humanities or, you know, other parts of you know, moms and dads and, and, and kind of part-time workers and, and all those groups, they want to participate and help out. Um, but you have to connect those two together, right? Like that's how the, that's the tricky thing with two-sided markets. And that's, it's kind of, it's, you know, it's the chicken and egg problem that comes up sometimes when people talk about these platforms and how to start them is how do you how do you identify the right group that's going to participate and and you know upload things for example but then how do you identify the other side that is going to be um, you know helping on the um, in 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 doing all the other stuff um, because it's not as typical as you think it is right once you start thinking about how so for example Uber works. It's not taxi drivers now. Now it is, but at the beginning, it was never taxi drivers that were using this thing. It was average Joes. Actually, that's why I like using Uber. Is because it's normal people. I get, you know, I drive around with a grandma, um, and they're normal people that are that 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 are just decent human beings that want to help out. Um, and, and and that's where the tricky thing with platforms are is is finding that connection that resonates with other people. Um, and that they want to help out and participate in, in sort of identifying these different groups like that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So well, that's why I actually built in the financial incentive into it. So actually, that's a great point, um, is that not everybody is altruistic, and I don't believe that at all. Um, in fact, the paper that, that I'm working on developing is sort of showing that, that, you know, the reason the, the, the sort of for, first go around, um, people participate on these things because of financial incentive, but then after, once they sort of are part of it, they become a little bit more altruistic and help out. Um, and so that's why I have the financial component to it is that after a while, if you want to, you know, participate that you can take money out of it. So that's to encourage real editors, um, to, to go on to it. Like people that, cause if you think about it, there's, there's so many jobs that are, that are transitioning at this moment, um, because of the way that the, the sort of technology is affecting them. Right. So, um, journalists, for example, um, you know, they are the the way that the work is at this moment is changing so if they had a platform that they can use some of the skills that they developed um and in 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 you know really help out um but at the same time make money out of it i think that they would be willing to do that three comments That would be that's oh, wait, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Oh. But so it wait, wait, so wait, so like you're able to go and track like it, whether or not like actually like okay, sorry. That sounds like a pretty crazy sort of uh you know well it sounds like that sounds nice. Uh, well, no, I mean that would be a long ways away. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a, that would be a long ways away, and I don't think I'd want to do that because that would create a disincentive for people to actually use it, um, right? But but at the same time, if you were really interested in that kind of thing, um, you know, maybe you could do uh you know the experimental work in the background and and if some if people agree to it and all that kind of stuff then maybe but i i, I can see that that would be very long into the distance i have three uh, <laughs> if that was yeah my mic has been acting up for a while but anyway the first comment i have is with regards to how you promote your platform because i think john is right i actually didn't know that a YouTube account was connected to the platform. I I found reciprocity the platform first before I found the YouTube, and I didn't know they were the same thing. I mean, yeah. So that's my first comment. It does. It's it's definitely not clear that that um one is supposed to promote the other. My second comment is with regards to this idea that um. I mean, I, I kind of get where you're coming from about, you know, having this open uh, area where everyone can come and submit stuff regardless of their field, discipline, whatever, right? But I, I see it as a very huge disincentive for doing so because, it, I mean, based on what you said, if the editors are just uh, non-academics, which, I mean, perhaps it would be true for, for other disciplines, but um, just take, say, a... Uh, one of those biomed papers uh, that come out during COVID, uh, uh, the way they, 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 they write and their style is definitely not something that I would want a, a lay person to edit. Uh, yeah, so, so, so actually that's a good point. Um, the way that, that I built that, way, I was sort of thinking about that at the beginning, um, is that you could skip through documents. So if you don't, if there's a document that you don't want to edit, um, you just skip through to the next one. It's kind no, of no, like no, that, that's, uh, that's Pandora. I, I recognize, I recognize the, the acceptance part is an acceptance part, but, but my yeah. point is, so then I don't really have a, a, an incentive to, to submit, uh, you know, many documents to this website. Uh, um, and that's coming to my next point. And also, as a, as a reviewer, then uh, you say, um, you know, your idea here is that perhaps somebody who's interested in the sciences could come and help uh, you know, contribute as much as they, they, they think they, they, they would like to, right, to, to help further sciences by, by helping uh, people correct their documents, right? But, but then if, if I'm going to skip through the first three documents, then I'm kind of giving up hope on, on this. <laughs> yeah. So I, I will never go back to the website if that's the case. Right. Uh. Yeah. So that that brings me to my third point, though, which is uh with regards to to submission. So if if people are skipping through documents or, or or you know documents spend a long time in this review process, then why would an academic have an incentive to upload documents to your website? Because as far as I'm concerned, I I believe that there's two 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 huge two major disincentives for an academic here. The first is with regards to uh, time, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. academics, you know, you, you want to get things done and then put it on the schedule and then push it forward, right? And and, and leaving it on a website and then hoping somebody will finally get to it is, is definitely a huge disincentive. And, and monetarily speaking, there is no real incentive for doing so either because if you are with an institution, you, you know, you can always uh, uh, claim research funds for, for, for editing services or whatever. Right. And, and finally, right, this, uh, the next disincentive for, for an academic is really time. Because the longer a paper sits out there, the less control you have over what's going to happen. You know, you get snipes, food, whatever, so on and so forth. So I, yeah, that, so I think. Yeah, no, I, I actually had thought about it. So the, 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 the financial thing is not everybody gets access to that, right? So as, as I mentioned, our research funds that are a little different. Um, and so not everybody, and, and was really thinking about, you know, graduate students at the beginning was like, graduate students can't afford to get those research funds. They don't have access to those. Um, and then the, the second 
comment, which which is interesting, and I thought about this, and the way that I actually created or we built into it was like a boost function. So if you needed to get done quicker, um, you you click a button and it expends um, credits to boost it, and then it's going to be pushed to the, the first available um, editor that's in the system. So I was thinking about that in terms of how, you know how do you speed this up and make sure it doesn't go uh, take too long. But in general, you know, after playing around with it myself, it doesn't typically take too, too long, um, you know, a couple of days and stuff like that I mean, to get yeah, it done. Yeah, but I, I see another flaw is, I mean, and, and forgive me, I, I don't mean to be, be, to be harsh or anything because no, this is, I, like this I said, is I, found, I, found, I found this website first before I found your YouTube account, which, you know, I was trying to look for something similar and I was curious what, what services that were out there, right? But, but, so, yeah, sorry, back to my point. So if I, so I can see the, the situation where, where, where a desperate graduate student, right, say myself, I can't think of an idea <laughs> for a third paper, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on this website and then I'm going to browse through people's papers and I'll be like, oh, yeah, that's a good one. And then I can pick it up. Pick it up. So, so in that sense, there's a huge disincentive for anyone to, to submit papers to the website, really, right? So, so, so I tried to no, I, I tried to get around that. that. There are still, there's still, there, there, there are a lot of things which I think uh, disincentivizes people to to participate. And and I understand, like you know, you 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 you're, you're, you're trying to 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 make it perfect, and and definitely that's a great idea. But my point is, unless you can communicate this message to people on both sides, it seems very unlikely that people want to yeah do. yeah so that's the tricky thing right so if, if you know the story of i don't know if you know the story of airbnb um with how they actually developed and built this thing because if you remember what they used to, especially like uber had the same problem as well is that they have this sort of stranger danger thing right like if um you might be younger than me i don't know i can't tell but um you know when i was growing up <laughs> familiar with your story <laughs> When I was growing up, it was always stranger danger. You don't want to, um, you know, you don't want to expose yourself. And that sounds like a bad sort of term, but you don't want to expose yourself to to strangers um, because they could take advantage of you, right? So you would never pick up hitchhikers, um, you never go to their houses and stuff like that. But they created um, a, a platform that they can get around some of those barriers and the way that they did that is um, by by building trust into the system you know things like um, the rating system for example the trust metric um, that they have um, they in, in, and I'm trying to build those things in um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know so in terms of in, in go terms ahead. Trust, you know, reputation, stuff like that. It's all, all these kind of reputational dynamics. The, the key point here, the key driving factor here is uh, critical mass, right? If you don't have a critical mass, you don't have trust. If you don't have trust, you, you don't have, you know, uh, participation. You got it. And, 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 the, and the problem there is where, where, where it lies is that I think perhaps compared to, to say, Airbnb or, or Uber, right? Those those have huge mass of users, right? So reaching a critical mass is just a matter yeah. of incentivizing. But they were. Users. They didn't have that at the beginning, though, is the issue. No, no, no. no. That, that was, hey, the, that, that was mean, the trouble. The available, the available, yes, I know. But what I'm saying is that the available users out there, right, are, are a plenty, even if they're not participating. So you incentivize them monetarily, whatever, right? Uh, by giving huge discounts, I, I, mean, I mean, taking an Uber used to be half the price of taking a cab, right? But on, on this website, the, the market, that the available market, right, is much, much smaller because you're really targeting people who are writing academic papers and how many, you know, tens of thousands might there be? Yeah, so, so this is a much broader problem. The way I look at it, um, you know, thinking about how do you get, a, 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 you know, a second look at the something that you're working on is a much broader problem. And it's not just academics, right? We have the same issues with like software quality control, for example. Um, you know, how do you get, how do you make sure that your software is, is, has been checked? You need some sort of mechanism to ensure other people are going to double check that. And if you are, a lone software developer, that's going to be hard to do. Um, so the the cases of this are much larger than you think it is of going into different areas. So it's a more fundamental problem is how do you incentivize feedback in a um, in, in a in a situation where it's it's not obvious and how to actually get this feedback.
Okay, uh, do you want me to go through some of the questions? Okay, um, yeah, I know that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that'd be super cool. Yeah, that'd be super cool. If you all wanted to do that, um, that would be, I don't know how I'd like force that, but. Yeah, that's how TikTok grew, is that they were, they put a, like a watermark on their videos and then people recognized it. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I like it. I guess very cool. Yeah, I, I think that would be actually a cool idea, like, you know, giving, uh, you know, academic brownie points to like whichever editor that would be there. Right. I mean, like, it's kind of like, uh, you know, how how there are RA ships and like a guy would go and say, you know, he just spent the whole time cleaning data, but, you know, he still gets gets his name on the on paper. You know, as part of like, you know, it's I guess it's a lot more common in the hard sciences to go and do that to see like, you know, undergraduates, uh, you know, on paper there, like, even though they've been just like, you know, sitting in a lab, like, you know, like, I guess, just clean, like, in context of like biology, you know, just making sure like, you know, the test tubes are cleaned, or whatever, um, or, you know, doing the old preliminary data results. So I mean, I think that would be, that's definitely an incentive for like anyone that wants to get any sort of like academic foothold of any sort, right, in terms of, you know, building a platform. Again, though, um, there's definitely, a, like, a moral hazard problem involved. Uh, you know, basically, like, you're going to be drawing in a bunch of users. Like, some are going to be good, and some are not going to be not so so good. Um, I definitely think, like, you know, originally, I was skeptical about your strategy in terms of marketing the actual platform, like, being like, okay, you know, you're doing uh, the Dr. Dave, uh, you know, motivational stuff and you're also doing this you know editing platform and if you would have came on and being like hey i'm developing this platform like it would have not like you would have not have like you know the same sort of channel growth right that you would have had it would have had uh you know not you know drew interest in the product so i think the the strategy right that you're doing even though you know there is this issue of connecting the dots together like there's not an instantaneous connect i don't necessarily know how you can make a marginal improvement on that so i you know I see what you're doing now. Yeah, so that, so that that's it. If you look at like a lot of, um, you know, how do you gain traction online is is the real puzzle, and it's about you know building the, the sorry how about that. Um, it's a, it's a build, about building connection with people and making them feel like they know who you are. Um, so there's. You know, it's a, it's a real struggle with trying to figure out how to do that um, and to do this in, you know, that's that's the other thing is like limited resources and all that kind of, I mean, that's typical entrepreneurship stuff, right, where you just don't have the resources to do all these kind of things. So I have to rely on, on you guys of, um, you know, getting the word out and actually using it and, um, you know, participating and giving me feedback and, you know, putting up with the fact that 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 this is a, this is a real journey and and that there's going to be problems. I noticed somebody put the the LinkedIn Google. Yeah, I know that 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 uh, that those links are not working at this moment. Um, so you know, putting up with all those kind of things or, or having a relationship 
where uh, you know people sort of put up with that and and deal with it, given that it's kind of got warts and it's ugly and it doesn't quite work right now. But uh, you know that's that's the important thing is to build that base first and to build the connection, and then you guys can see it as it's it's being developed um, and being open about it. I mean, I'll, that's I mean on the YouTube channel, I am so open about this kind of stuff of of feeling like, man, this is a real struggle. Um, but I, I think everybody feels like that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of universal. So that's, that's why I'm doing it. Uh, thanks for, thanks for uh, putting all these comments and all that kind of stuff on there. It's awesome. Ah, thanks. Uh, you are taxes. That's awesome that you signed up as an editor. You have to do, so in terms of ensuring quality, I, I've got, you know, it's been sort of interesting to figure this out is not only is there's this rating system where other people sort of rate you, but then you have to do tasks, um, several tasks that to, to weed out people that are going to be, um, you know, spammers or whatnot. So you have to go through and check those two, two, there's two sort of simple tasks that you do. And right now it's just me that's, that's checking them. Um, a lot of these platforms actually do that kind of stuff anyways, right? To sign up to, to Uber, you have to get, you know, license and all that kind of stuff. So ensuring that you're a real person that's doing good stuff, I think that is important. Um, and how, so, so I hope you see why I'm doing what I'm doing. It wasn't the fact that, um, it, I evolved into the fact of actually trying to help you guys. Like I evolved into this kind of, um, you know, social influencer thing, whatever that is, um, it was simply because it was like, how do you build a connection with somebody um, in, in doing the hard sell of go buy my thing, go use my thing. You know, this is the, the technology behind it. Nobody uses that. Nobody cares. That's not how marketing works in the real world anyways. I mean, if you looked at, um, you know, for example, Nike, or you looked at Reebok, or you looked at, at, at any of the consumer goods that you use, they never sell the technology itself. They're selling something totally different. Um, and I'm just being open. <laughs> That's it. Uh, of of just talking about my struggles so so that other people can sort of see what what's going on um because i see this as something that is is bigger than what it actually is uh and and i can't get there by myself um frankly i just don't have the money for it and i don't have you know the bandwidth and all that kind of stuff i need to, to get more help with it um, so that's where you guys are involved or you folks are involved. So, um, yeah, I'm on TikTok as well. TikTok's pretty kind of interesting. I'm just going through the comments. Um, so I, I had a quick question that I think I'll get to, and it kind of ties into one thing that King Kong had asked, but mine's a little more direct. Have you ever encountered a problem where like a paper sat there for like you know, uh, days people are skipping by it and then it goes longer, maybe because people thought it was beyond the scope of what they're capable of editing or it's outside an area that they're familiar with. And have, do you have like a mechanism to deal with like something going too long or is it something that the person who produced the paper has to do? Like, I know there are some yeah. platforms that have like a bounty system where something's going on too long and the economic incentives for becoming the editor on it increase. Oh, that's kind of cool. I actually wanted to do like dynamic pricing on it. Um, I haven't got there yet in terms of doing the dynamic pricing in terms of a number of. Um, yeah, I could see that being a feature yeah. that you need to hit a certain mass of uh, user base before you can really implement. But yeah, that's it. And it's just it's it's a lot of work, um, especially with yeah, I've got great developers, um, but at the same time, you know, I don't have somebody that's like a star that can kind of figure the stuff out at this moment, right? Um, yeah. So that's, you kind of need somebody that's smart, like a smart economist <laughs> to figure this stuff out. And then the, the other question I had is, I know you had mentioned a difficulty with ranking on certain keywords and you had uh, spoken with somebody else that I think is a professor that recommended building up some of the social media aspects. Have you, uh, and I know you said budget's a bit of concern on some things. Have you ever 
uh, like tried to speak with professors that have specialized in like search engine optimization or even tried to consult with companies. I, I know it can be extremely expensive on the monthly basis to, to push search engine optimization. I, I worked in a startup previously that did some in that area, but I, I, I'm just curious yeah, if you so, explored that um, at all. Or... I paid for some of that stuff and, you know, given, like you're saying, it's, it's very expensive. And given that this is, there's virtually no revenue that's being generated from it, um, from the platform itself, a little bit here and there. Um, it, it's just, you wouldn't get there. Um, you would need a lot of VC funds or something like that yeah. to actually get okay. to that point. Yeah, I, I was just itself. curious, cause I know like certain keywords, it's, it's, uh, the firm that we worked with that we were building tools for them and keyword tools mm -hmm. and they, they weren't accepting any clients that were like less than $10,000 a month. So I, I know it's extremely, extremely expensive to rank. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that it's until I'm getting to the point where this is generating millions of dollars, which I don't know that I doubt it'll ever get to, you know, get to that point, but if it ever gets to that point, then you could use those kind of things. Or right now you have to do the sort of guerrilla warfare tactics. Um, that's very smart of, of you to recognize that, by the way. Thank you. Um, uh, that's the real I, I've problem. I've bookmarked your website, so I'm hoping to be in a point where I'm actually doing papers as opposed to math problems, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Um, and, and, you know, that would be the cool thing is eventually branch off into other things. Obviously that's, that's, that's far away, but somebody to double check, you know, create this, this feedback system to double check like equations or, um, you know, the, the computer software is the big one, um, to validate, just basically get validation and create some sort of mechanism on that. It's, but I'm doing this because I want to stay close to home and you know, solve my problem first and then sort of branch out after that and whatever that looks like, maybe that's 10 years from now or 20 years from now, but um, yeah. Any other questions? Good, awesome, thanks. Yeah, thank you so much all for for following along. Um, yeah, it's amazing. I you guys actually want to listen. Pardon me. Thank you so much for getting on. Um, I was actually, uh, it, it's it's actually pretty crazy that I think that like you actually signed up to do this because uh, it's like usually like it would be like, hey, uh, I have a, there's a Discord server out there, and I'm asking a professor to go, you know, talk to a bunch of you know strangers on the internet uh, about what's going on. So. Yeah, no, really, thank you so much. This is like, this was, uh, this is beyond uh, what I expected. Uh, really, thank you. Very cool. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate everything and for you to reach out. And uh, I know I'm going to meet you guys someday anyway. So I know you're anonymous and you're going to crap on me um, anonymously, but I'll, I'll meet you someday yeah. and then we can have a beer together. 